So y equals beta 1 minus alpha x divided by theta alpha. Now, just um, a notational tool that is kind of helpful. This is the same thing as, let's say, beta times 1 minus alpha divided by theta alpha times x. These are the same thing. If I have a fraction and I multiply it by a number, I can also take that and put it on top of the fraction. So these two things are equal. That's, uh, maybe I'll write that as an algebra rule. So let's say I have a over b, a over b times c is equal to a c over b. Okay, same thing. Okay, so now we have y as a function of x. We can use this to solve our Lagrangian. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that y and we're going to plug it in to our third first order equation. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to write my third first order equation again here. Equals zero. Now why, why am I doing this? Uh, because I see, I, I'm just recognizing that I have y as a function of x. If I plug this into here, if I plug this into here, I'm going to get a function that's only a function of x. And if I have a function that's only a function of x, then I can solve for x as a function only of the parameters, which means um, I will have my final solution for x. So let me do that. I'm going to plug y here into this. So z minus beta x minus theta plugging in minus alpha plugging in x plugging in y we get this. Okay, equals zero. All right, so now we can look at this and we uh, the first thing we w might notice is that we can cancel out. So we can cancel the thetas out. All right. Um, so let me just rewrite this. Minus beta 1 over alpha over alpha times x equals 0. Okay. Now, this, again, is kind of a complicated equation, but we can simplify this. One thing that we're going to recognize here is that is that x is multiplied by two different terms. So we have beta x and then this complicated term times x. And so we can do what we call factor out a number. So let me illustrate what factoring out is. Let's say I have a times c plus uh, b times c. I can quote-unquote factor out the C. This is the same thing as C times A plus B. Okay, it's factoring it out. So I can factor out X. In fact, I can even notice that I can factor out um, beta X. Okay, so I go to Z minus beta X times 1 plus 1 minus alpha over alpha equals zero. I'm factoring out my beta x. I'm pulling it out. Uh, actually, I'm pulling out um, negative beta x. If I do that, then I'm going to get one, and then I'm going to get one uh, minus alpha over alpha. Um, let me just distribute this. I'm going to just going to, I'm going to distribute this back to kind of prove to you that these two things are the same. So if I distribute, I'm going to take negative beta x times 1. So that would be negative beta x. And then I'm going to take it over here. Negative beta x times 1 over alpha. Uh, I'm sorry, 1 minus alpha over alpha. So that I'm going to have negative beta x times 1 over alpha. Uh, I'm sorry, 1 minus alpha over alpha. Um, and I can just do some rearranging here beta x. Um, I can put the beta back up on top if I want. 
over alpha times x. So you can see here that, that this is equal to this, okay, because I just pulled the beta x out. Once I do that, um, it's starting to become more clear how I can solve this. Um, I can easily isolate x here using the tools we've already used. But now I'm going to simplify this first and use this as an illustration of some algebra. So let me pull this out. I'm just going to write what's inside of this parentheses over here, and I'm going to use it to illustrate the algebra. So I have 1 plus 1 minus alpha over alpha. I can simplify this. I can make this um, much simpler. What I'm going to recognize is that 1 is that any fraction of one number, actually let me write this in blue, a over a equals one. Any, any, any term over itself is just equal one. So when I have a one, I can make that one whatever I want. I mean, in the sense that I can turn it into some number over some other, uh, um, some number over itself any number over itself. So looking at that, I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to make that 1 alpha over alpha. Same thing. Alpha over alpha is equal to 1. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take alpha over alpha plus 1 minus alpha over alpha. I do that. I'm like, ah, look at that. I can combine these fractions. This is equal to alpha plus 1 minus alpha over alpha. How does that work? Let me illustrate that algebra. If I have a over b plus c over b, if it has the same denominator, I can add the I can add the tops together and keep the same denominator. So if I have this, this is equal to a plus c over b. So I can just I can just bring these two terms together here. Looking at this, I realize that I have a, or I'm sorry, alpha minus another alpha, so this equals 1 over alpha. So, aha, this complicated term is actually a much simpler term. It's just 1 over alpha. So let me, let me substitute this 1 over alpha back in. It's a much simpler term. I have z minus beta x times 1 over alpha equals 0. Much simpler. Z, I'm just going to write it again. Um, I'm just going to write it this way. Alpha times x equals 0. All right, this is going to be much easier to solve. So let's solve this out. I'm going to take z to the other side. It's negative z. I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by negative alpha. Okay. Multiply both sides by negative alpha. I get rid of the negative sign and the alpha. I get rid of the negative sign, and uh, I've got alpha times z. I divide both sides by beta, and I get alpha z over beta. Now I look at this and I think, ah, there's no variables here. There's no x's over here. There's no y's over here. There's no lambdas over here. That means this is an optimal solution. We've got our first optimal. That's a good. That's um, that's nice. It's nice to have one because now we can take this, go back, and find all the other ones. So let's uh, let's let's go back to our y. We had before we had y equals beta one minus alpha over theta alpha times x. I can take x star, plug it in here and get my optimal y. So let me do that. Let me take let me take this and plug it in here. y equals beta 1 minus alpha for theta alpha times alpha z over beta. So I see this and first I can see that I can cancel some things out. I can cancel the alphas out. I can cancel the betas out. And so what I'm going to get is this. 1 minus 
alpha z over theta. That's going to be my optimal y. So let me just write it off. Because I notice there are no x's, no y's, and no lambdas in this. So this is a function only of parameters. Therefore, this is uh, my final solution for y. Now I have my final x. I've got my final y. Now I can go back to my um, I can go back to my lambda and solve um, and and solve for my lambda. Okay. The lambda might look um, a little bit um, a little bit messy when we plug these into uh, the lambda, uh, but we can do that here. So we have lambda equals alpha y one minus alpha x alpha minus 1 over beta. So what we would do to find the optimal lambda is plug the optimal y and the optimal x into this uh, into this lambda, um, into this function for lambda. And so then that will allow us to find the optimal uh, the optimal lambda value. Okay. When we have a really complicated um, function, okay, we can write this in, but sometimes we just, it's not easy uh, to simplify something. In this case, it's just going to be really a very messy uh, function and it's not immediately obvious uh, or may not be possible to create a nice simplification and this is kind of one of those one of those cases okay so that's it we've solved for our optimal value of x optimal value of y and optimal value of lambda and along the way we picked out a couple um, algebra tools that were helpful for us uh, in accomplishing that task. Now what I'm going to do next is I want to just summarize some of these algebra tools. But what I think I'll do is I'll create, um, I'll leave that for my next video and just in case someone wants to look at the algebra tools um, and does not necessarily want to go through um, this whole solution. So uh, goodbye for this video, and I will um, see you in the next. Thank you for watching.